Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Eulogy for the late Mildred Louise Williams, the parchment. We just cannot know what lies ahead from day to passing day. What changes God is planning in his wise and loving way. We just cannot know the reason why our sorrow has to be. Why we must lose the one we love so specially. These are the sentiments we express today as we not only mourn the passing but celebrate the life of one who in our own special way has made a tremendous impact on many of our lives. Mildred Louise Williams, Auntie Millie, Auntie Muriel, Miss Millie, was the fourth child for Vera and William Parchment of Stevens Run, St. Elizabeth. After her father died, leaving Ma Vera with six children, Miss Millie was sent to live with her grand-aunt, Mommy Fagan, who sent her to Maine Primary School. A few years later, she returned to live with her mother and attended Littis Elementary School. At the age of 18, Miss Millie went to Kingston, seeking a better life for herself. In the 1950s, many Jamaicans began traveling to England to eat out a better life for themselves and their families. Miss Millie also seized the opportunity as she thought life should be better there. It was a decision she often said was not an easy one as she had to leave behind her three children, Johnny, Pam, and Kay. Her mother, Mavira, encouraged her nonetheless, and in 1958 she left for England. Life in England had its ups and downs for Miss Millie, but she never spoke without thanking God for taking her there as she was better able to provide for her children. Her first job in England was at the Cumberland Hotel in London. After a few years there, she, re she relocated to Luton, Bedfordshire, where she worked at an English electric company for a few months, and then to Kent Meters, which made special water meters. Here she worked for 26 years. Life in England was not all work for Miss Millie, however. There was also romance. In July 1959, she met Kenneth Williams, who had also migrated from Jamaica, Bamboo, St. Anne to be exact. And after five months of courtship, they were married on December 26th of the same year. Now, 52 years later, there is no denying that they were still as devoted to each other as on the day they met. Who says love at first sight doesn't work? The union produced one bouncing baby boy, Kevin Anthony. Miss Millie was not one to sit on the sidelines and watch. She was always willing to share her knowledge and assist where she could. In Luton, Luton she along with three ladies started the West Indian Association, which later grew into the Mary Seagull Hostel for Homeless Children. She became an integral part of her children's education when she was appointed a member of the Board of Governors at Chatlin High School, where Kevin attended, and Chatlin High School for Girls, where Kay, who had previously joined her from Jamaica, attended. Although Miss, Mill Miss Millie was busy with work and children, she made time for God. She was a firm believer in the power of God, and so she always found the time to witness for him. In Luton, she became a member of the Oakdale Methodist Church, where she started the Women's Association Group. Their activities would include mentoring the young people in the church, and they also formed a book club, reading and discussing several issues. Later on, she would become a member of this the Littis Moravian Church, 
and an active member of the Women's Fellowship. To Miss Millie, Jamaica was always her home, and she looked forward to returning here someday. On her retirement in 1994, after more than 35 years in England, Miss Millie and her husband decided that the time was not right for them to go home. The climate here would be also more conducive to her health. Together, she and Ken bought a piece of land in Stevens Run, right back to her hometown and near to her sisters, Yuna and Mary, and her brother, Clifton. And in 1995, Miss Millie came home, staying with her son in Mandeville as she supervised the building of their new home. They settled in well and soon became respected and valuable members of the Stevens Run community. It is very hard to speak about Miss Millie and to mention her husband, Ken, as he has always been supportive of any ventures in which she participated. In England, she was always reaching out offering whatever comfort and help that she could give to the elderly. She made Christmas dinner for those living on their own. She visited old people's homes and after Sunday service, she visited the elderly and shut-ins. Her husband, Ken, had the very important job of driver, and so he helped her to make the deliveries. She gave away the produce of her husband's backyard garden to everyone. I know because I have been a recipient of much of these. When it was active season, you could listen for the call, especially if we are not been there, down here for a while. Tell Johnny to come, the act is soon finished. <laughs> or we could hear Ken calling to say he was going to leave a box on the veranda for us. You think it is safe? And we would say, okay, for the right work. Miss Millie's home was a favorite meeting spot in England because of her cooking, baking, and all the other experiences that she shared. You would believe she was a trained chef, as she made her black forest cake, Christmas cake, pizza, Chinese dishes. And she continued this baking when she came to Jamaica. She loved to entertain, and it was always a pleasure to visit her on Boxing Day in particular, which was also her wedding anniversary. Not only for the turkey and the ham, that we could not afford on a regular basis, but for the family time that we shared. Miss Millie was a family woman. She cared equally for all and ignored no one. She loved her grandchildren, and they loved her too. She called them rotten. However, if any of them stepped out of line, she would address them in an iron fist, but in a calm and loving way. Darren and his sister and brother thought she was the best grandmother in the whole world. When she decided to return to Jamaica, they were very unhappy and cried a lot because asking her when she planned to come back to England. Her grand and great grandchildren in Cayman were always happy to come and visit her when she returned to Jamaica. Paul, Duane, and Jake remember those times when they visited her. She would always find an occasion to take each of them aside and offer them few words of wisdom. Quite a lot of words, actually. <laughs> According to Jake, Grandpa usually comes to save them, as he came to tell Grandma that it was late and Charlie had to go. I can assure them, though, that all of us, including all the, the many nieces and nephews that are here today, quite a lot of them are here today, and in-laws, have sat to listen to those words of wisdom and encouragement that she's always ready to share. Anyone who has had anything to do with Miss Millie knows she's a very outspoken lady, stubborn at times, and very strong willed. You may not always have seen eye to eye, but this is not prevent you from respecting and loving her. When she was up to it, she could also engage in deep conversation. I heard Miss Mayor say, and she could really talk. I remember when I got married, she came to the wedding. I met her for the first time. And then we were taking her back to England. Sorry, not England. <laughs> to the airport. We were coming from Porth. And Miss Mary kept us going right through to Kingston Airport. And those days we didn't have the highway 2000. <laughs> she, she was... 
she was the family historian. She portrayed the family's relations as far back as possible. And it was always a wonder to know that her memory was so good. Just two weeks before she died, she and Johnny were in a long conversation about who was related to whom and where who used to live, and they went on and on. He likes to hear the history. I don't know if he plans to take over the job of the family historian, or that this lady is gone. She was a fashionable lady, as you all heard, who loved to enjoy the good things of life. As we say in Jamaica, she knew how to put herself together. Those watching the screen would have seen those fabulous and hats and scarves that she loved to wear. Miss Millie has had her share of medical problems. As early as in her 20s, she and her sister Yuna were in a serious truck accident. Miss Millie sustained serious injuries with several broken ribs and was in the Manuel Hospital for three months. In later years, she developed other medical problems which prevented her from being as active as she would have wanted. She has always dealt with her illness with grace and dignity. She was a strong woman, and this strength shone through during her long fight with various illnesses. In 2011, her health deteriorated so much that she was admitted to the intensive care unit of the Manila Public Hospital. After she was discharged, her husband Ken became her sole caregiver looking after her with love and dedication to the very end. May the Lord give him the courage to face the days ahead. Miss Smith was never the same after this. On October 26, she was again admitted into hospital. She passed away peacefully in her sleep on the morning of Saturday, 27 October. Miss Millie, we little knew that Saturday morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Miss Millie leaves behind to mourn husband Kenneth, children Kingsley, Sharon, Kareem, and Kevin, brothers Kenneth and Clifton, sisters Bobby, Gatha, Mary, and Yuna, 15 grandchildren, 16 great grandchildren, one great great grandchild. Lots and lots of nieces and nephews and in-laws and a host of friends. Sleep on Miss Millie. May God grant you eternal rest and life perpetually shine upon you. We now hear from the choir, followed by the message presented by Reverend Devon Anthony. 